So we're just going to restart now and go over everything. Hopefully there isn't, this isn't as bad as before. I don't know what was going on with that. I can't think, it's not like there's multiple things recording me or anything like that. Hopefully we can spend as little time on this as possible, but I'm just going to wait for it to go live. As bad as before. Okay, I think it's good now. I think it's good. I'm really sorry, you guys. I didn't know what you meant. When you said echo alert, I thought that was some, like, bot. I don't know. That was so weird. That was so... It was, like, demonic almost. Oh, my God. Well, let's start over. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, So, today, I'm going to fix animation stuff later because we've been doing a lot of that. And it takes a while, and I probably won't do it as fast as I'm expecting that I will. Um, So, today... I'm going to take mechanics requests, and I know there were already some last time that I wasn't able to get to um, whatsoever. <laughs> Your drawing changed after hearing that echo. <laughs> it really was crazy. I have my computer muted so that, like, if in case, like, I don't know, an ad or videos randomly start playing in the background, like, even if that happens, like, on one of my tabs, that you guys wouldn't hear it. So I had it muted, and I'm like, oh, what do they mean, Echo? It can't be that bad. And then I press unmute, and it's like, whoa. Okay. <laughs> um. So, yeah, we didn't get to mechanics last time. Um, I guess just briefly, because I'm sure no one could hear what I was actually saying. So here's our game. It's very simple, and we can build on it even to 3D, but we want to start the simplest case. Hey there. Hey, fried chicken. Um, so we start out in 1D. We're on this one-dimensional line, and there's cat heads just representing us, but technically these should all be, you know, like dots. So we switch to 2D. And, oh, I should change the idle animation. Whoops. Well, it's fine for now. Um, and we have a null reference exception. Great. Actually, I'm going to restart Unity really quickly because I think that's what's happening. The reason why the idle animation's like that, in case you guys weren't here yesterday, is um, because I was trying to mess with... I didn't want to, like, actually make an idle animation. Um, and uh, so I was messing with the state machines, and I just wanted to make sure that there's a difference between the idle and the walking left. But I was going to make an idle animation today, but we'll worry about polish later. So what would be great is if um, I'll take one thing per person, I guess, like no more than one thing. Um, <laughs> I'm still laughing at that echo. <laughs> it's so bad. <laughs> um, so basically, knowing those mechanics, that it starts with 1D, we go to 2D, we can be in 2D for a limited amount of time. Um, name simple like bite-sized things so not necessarily like turn it into an rpg that recalls call that ah, that requires a system overhaul uh just things like for example there's a mention of power-ups or maybe blocks give you things or maybe like nothing that changes the fundamentals of the game right now it's just you get to the end of the level you touch a flag and you win oh it's easter where you are that's all right. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Um, but yeah, so we know that we have to touch a goal. We'll die if we're in 2D for too long. So we want to make use of these different levels. So if any of you guys want to just name anything, it could be like power up that makes you regen your bar faster. Maybe I should make that bar today. You know what I'll do? I'm going to make a visual bar or a visual number of your energy to make this a little bit easier to tell like when you're losing. But while I do that, if anyone wants to name anything, yes, I am saying that I can't develop an MMO from this dumb little thing right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, everybody, I'm going to make an MMO about anatomically correct dragons. Please fund my Kickstarter. Please, please. Um... <laughs> Yeah, the servers are in my bathroom, because I don't really have a closet. My closet's in my bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that was one thing. Um, I'm, hold on, I'm looking something up, but I'll tell you a little story. My boyfriend and I, were moving to Seattle, so we're apartment hunting right now. And uh, one of his 
requirements is that if we have like a study, you know, one of those extra things that's not a bedroom or a walk-in closet that it's getting turned into a server room. And I'm like, what are we going to use servers for? And it's just like, there are so many things we could use <laughs> servers for. Oh my gosh. I guess we're going to like have our own personal server. And I was thinking like, could we like, you know, host a website from our closet, but it couldn't handle the traffic, I'm guessing. Not that I would get, like, that much traffic, but if it ever did get a lot of traffic, then, you know, it would be overloaded and die. Um, alright, so what's happening is, I'm looking up how to do UI stuff, because Unity's UI canvas is very weird, um, where it uses, like, a different coordinate system. So I'm just gonna look at here, we can look at it together, except it looks like it's a video, which I'm not happy about, but they do exp um, share all of this stuff. So, okay. Does this have anything that displays text? Set count text. Count text dot text. So where's count text? I'm guessing that's maybe, okay, I'm guessing count text is something, uh, a UI element. Let me just scroll through the video really quickly. I'm not going to show it. Let me just see. Yeah, it looks like they're just using the UI canvas. Okay, that's what we're doing right now. 10 out of 10 funded. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just definitely pick an idea that um, that you like and I'd be glad to. I'll even go back to the chat because there are a couple things that I didn't get to. So, okay, we're gonna just do some text over here. Um, see, that's the problem, the coordinates. I never really know how to make the coordinates work. Cause look at this, this is the UI canvas size, everybody. It's very much like it projects the coordinates, but it's very odd. Um, I don't know how much I like it. Like this is our camera view and then our level is very tiny. This is why I, I'm sure this is like standard practice and I'm just a scrub who doesn't get it, but it's very weird. Hey there, hey powerful. <laughs> that sounds like a fun name to call yourself. Who am I? I am powerful. And I'm happy. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be, it's just going to say score. And then, or no, not score. We're going to just call it the magic meter still. Uh, magic meter. And for now, it's going to be text because making a visual is a little bit more involved. So that's up there in the most awkward ass font. Let's, can we, do we have a different font? No, I didn't import a font. So we're going to use gross looking Arial font. Um, wait, why is this suddenly off the thing? Do we need to make it bigger maybe? Let's make it 30. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but it's going off the, off the thing. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, let's make this bigger then. How about that? Let's make it bigger, bigger to the side, bigger going up. I don't know why it disappeared. I don't know how UI things work. <laughs> and you are fried. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder, see, I always wonder, for some of you guys whose usernames aren't, like, related to, like, your name or something personal about you, I mean, I guess they all are, like, personal, but, like, how do you, how do people choose usernames, you know what I'm saying? Oh, gosh, this is really gross looking. Okay, we're gonna use shitty text because I don't care about my UI right now. Uh, we're gonna say it's initially 100, and then we're gonna set the text every time we change the meter, but yeah. How, um, because mine, well, I can explain the story of mine later. I think I already kind of said it in other things, but I always wonder how people, because that's like your username. I mean, I guess it's not, it's not so final of a decision or anything like that, but like when some people have like, for example, when some people's main Reddit account is like PM me dick pics or something, I'm like, why did you commit to that? Like, what made you, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's not, maybe I overthink things and it's really not as crazy as I'm thinking. Um, let's see. So this is called text, I'm guessing. We're going to call this uh, magic. Magic the Gathering. I never played Magic the Gathering. I had a friend explain it to me. And it's not that I'm like, ooh, it's too confusing. I can't figure it out. And it's just more of like, that sounds expensive. I'm not going to figure it out. <laughs> Magic seems more expensive than crack, as they say. I'm sure that's an overused joke, but to me, it sounds very new and very funny. <laughs> um, 
show a bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So eventually I'm going to do a bar. It's just that right now I want to like skip all of the, uh, what do you, what would you call it? I want to skip all of the bullshit of me drawing. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thanks for sending me some ideas. Uh, but I want to skip all the bullshit of drawing because I'm not very fast at it. And I feel like people have watched me struggle to draw things enough this week. Um, I should stop. I keep bringing like an apple every time I stream. And I keep just bringing it in case I get hungry so I don't have to just straight up leave. But then I just end up eating the whole time. And I do that with carrots too. Carrots were the worst. They messed me up. Mmm. Wait. Dot get component? Can I get- is there a text- okay so there's a text component. Text? I guess it's called GUI text. I'm not sure if this should be on GUI. Wait. I forget. I know there's like an on GUI function that like when you have GUI elements, I think it's just if it like interacts with the GUI. I don't even know. Um, but we're going to say set or dot, te uh, te can we set the text? Okay. We can set the text like this equals mm, magic. What do we, what do we say it is? Magic meter, magic meter. Uh, space plus and then I don't know if we have to cast it as a string or not I know you do in Python but we're just not gonna mess with that we're gonna be safe does it like this does it not like this um right maybe it doesn't want this maybe we can just do this and C sharp is lovely enough that it'll automatically cast it for us the apple biting sound was crisp <laughs> that's a thing I have this thing about fruit well, you'll see in my, I'm working on a video, um, about Soylent as my thank you for 10,000 subscribers, which is really, really crazy. There, there's actually a lot of interesting things about Soylent that I won't get into because I'm trying to make a video on it. Um, let's see if this goes down. The magic meter is not moving. All right. It says missing component. Let's take a look. There's no GUI text attached. I was trying to access it. Um, it has no GUI text. Let's see. I know, I know that I'm not using it right, so I'm not like, let's see. How is this deciding to do it? This stuff from here. I'll talk about the strawberries in a second. I'm not going to forget about that. I usually forget. So this is same. I was trying to access it. Um, it has no GUI text. Let's see. I know, I know that I'm not using it right, so I'm not like, Let's see, how is this deciding to do it? This stuff from here, I'll talk about the strawberries in a second. I'm not gonna forget about that, I usually forget. So this is same, blah.text equals, oh, do I have to do a two string? Well, wait, how did he get count text? Public text count text. I don't know how he's planning on organizing things. Um, do I just, I don't know. Okay, well, let's just keep going. Um, I think, first of all, we do want to do this. I was right, but we don't just cast it as a string. That's a Python thing, I think. We want to do the two string, and then I think there's no GUI text. That's fine. Um, but there is a text. It says text script. So this is probably a different like type of object, I guess. So let's just do that. Um, and then we'll get back to the strawberries. This is one of those days I can tell where I just want to like talk about things, but but we we must we must forge on and actually finish it. And if anyone has a mechanic idea, just shout it out. A text string displayed in a GUI. Can I make like a GUI text thing? Because if I do UI, I feel like this is a GUI text, but I know it's not, or else it would have you know said something. So what type is this? Grab. Okay, let me just look up. Um, change. UI text unity. Okay, the fun of Google searches with me. Um, how to edit UI text from script. There we go. Um, ba -ba -ba. Answers.unity3d.com is my life right now. It says just git component text. Um, ba -ba -ba. Git component unityengine.ui. Okay, so as of Unity 4, this is valid. We'll see if this is valid for us. He's saying just use, just use, the, oh gosh, 
this. Okay, I can't copy paste it. It's like Unity Engine. I don't know why it has to be like this, but, you know. So he's saying to do this. I don't know if this will work or not, because Unity 5 a lot changed, so I'm, like, not trusting anything I find on the internet, which I should with most things, but, um, oh gosh, it doesn't like it at all. Um... Let's see, it looks like maybe we can't access it like this. Can we do this, maybe? I didn't know, because I'm just looking at his example. This is the joy of the internet. Okay, it still doesn't like the left hand side. Wait, 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 it's compiling. It's thinking. There we go. Okay, so it compiles. We'll see if it even, if it even works. Dog text? UI text or dog text? I think dog text would be a pain. Dogs can't read. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being silly. Oh, hey, here we go. It's working. I know that there's like a ton of floating point numbers, but okay, there we go. And so if we wait, it should just restart the level. I know I made the decay rate a lot slower than before. Okay, game over, but it's not. Oh, right. I set it not to reload. And then see, then it recharges really quickly, and then it goes here, and then it says you win. If you look at the console in the corner, it looks like we lost 211 times, but we won 300 times, so great. Okay, so that works, at least. Um, that's all we wanted. Uh, maybe we'll change the rates around so it's a little bit less, you know, there's a little bit more challenge. Um, so right now the decay rate is really slow. We're going to change this to 0.5. How about we just regen like a little bit faster than we decay okay so now I would like I would like you guys to give me suggestions of course you don't have to and of course I'm not relying on participation for today in case I don't know you guys feel like being quiet or working I don't know um, so I'm just gonna start by making this level um, I'm going to start doing what I can with blocks, and if no one says anything, I'll just keep going. But, I do want this to be a fun experience. Um, okay, so we're going to start by messing with blocks and like perception of like height and things like that. Um, there's already some interesting things we can do with this, which is why I'm kind of excited. So we have this huge floor. I'm actually going to move this floor over here. Sometimes you have, you know what I'm going to do? We'll put a little reward in case someone goes this way. And then we're also going to put, there should be an invisible wall somewhere. Um, there's like a flag collider. I think it's this thing over here. I'm going to make a copy of this, even though it's not a flag collider. And I'm going to put this over here. So there's like an invisible wall that you can't fall off of. And then, you know, we could add sprites to these to like make it an actual wall. Actually, maybe we could do that with the floor sprite, but I'm not gonna worry about it for right now. So let's just make sure he doesn't fall off the side. But what I like doing, and this was in Shovel Knight a lot, is having the player move to the left. Um, Cause it's something you don't think of when you first start the screen and then you get a little reward. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze did that, oh my God, oh God. What just happened with that? I literally changed nothing other than putting a collider over here. Oh, maybe the floor collided with it? That's probably what happened. So I'm going to move this, like, up, I guess. Like this. Okay. I feel like that's what happened. It bumped into the floor, and then they both, like, ricocheted off each other. What? How did me making a flag collider make the cat fall? Oh my god, okay, let's just delete this for a sec. If that's really what's going on, then I'm so confused. Did I just change something that I didn't realize? Like, okay, the cat, it should not have... Wait, it's gravity scale is... Wait, but this should be... Oh, it's hitbox didn't change. Oh, 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 that's weird. See, that's the one thing is that these hitboxes don't always, like, line up with their, with their things. Like, okay, let's say I just take off this box collider real quick, and then I put it back on. Will it now fit to it? Okay, now it fits to it, but I guess I thought I made the silly assumption that just by moving it, I would also be moving its collider, which is a little bit weird. Okay, kitty. Let's just make sure you're on solid ground. Okay, you are but you're a little bit higher than before. 
Um, like if we do this, yeah, everything's a little bit off. And the magic meter went down like instantly. Game over, game over. But then we win. Okay, and also that floating point stuff is like very disconcerting. Um, cause let's see, maybe the floor, it's at, Let's see, the player, is it zero, zero? Cause I tried to make everything at even, yeah, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And then the flag is there, this is there, this is there, this is there, this is there. Weird, just by moving the floor, everything got off like vertically. I wonder if it has to do with the collider too? I don't know. Um, let me make this maybe more like 0 0.5. That's probably not good. If I just make it zero, then everything, okay. I guess we'll deal with this for now. It's a little bit weird though. Oh, now that looks more normal. I don't know. I don't know, you guys. I don't care. Um, but we're going to make that invisible wall again. And the first thing, so we're going to play with the idea of blocks and then maybe make, I don't want to make enemies yet. Right now I want to make it almost like more puzzly game than making like attacking. Like if there is an enemy, it's something to like avoid more than anything. So we're going to take this flag collider and we're going to duplicate it. And then we're going to move the collider over here. And so hopefully there's one there, there's one there. So hopefully we'll have these invisible walls that we could later turn into the real walls or, you know, sometimes they really do just have invisible walls. So yeah, we can't, we can't go past this point. A lot of times like Mario will have it so that the wall is like at the edge of the camera where the camera won't move any farther than your, your starting point, if you get what I mean. So, okay, we're crashing into this thing. We go over here and then let's recharge a bit. Okay, we see this one, we go like this, we go through here. Now, what I'd like to do is extend this level a bit. See, this is just like Mario Maker, everybody. It's just like Mario Maker, except um, not quite. <laughs> so we're gonna move these two over here. Oh, okay. I see what I did. Okay, I'm gonna move this outside of this hierarchy and I'm gonna call this um, invisible wall left. Cause that's what it is. It's the invisible wall on the left. Now these guys are gonna go over here and we're gonna try to just fill up. We're gonna start here. We're gonna aim to fill up this whole floor, but then right now we're just gonna fill up this level to there. All right, so we can jump. That's one thing. Um, let's duplicate a couple of these blocks and do some more things with them. Let's rearrange them. Now it's the fun part. We get to design the level now that we have stuff that works. Um, I'll fix the animation. Some of it I might do off camera too because I really like relaxing. All right, I was gonna talk about the strawberries. Okay. I really like relaxing and drawing, but I feel like this is more fun. Um, by the way, I don't know where my Twitch messages are because I'm a noob, so I don't even know where to access. Oh, here, messages. Um, so also if you wanted to message me them, I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't have anything in my messages. Oops. But, um, okay. For now, what we're going to do is... Let's see, we like putting these in increments. So this is gonna be at position three. So let's say, so usually, okay. What I found in level design, and I'm not like some master or anything like that. Uh, what I found in level design, think of like Mario Maker and stuff, which is something if I had a capture, I would love to stream making levels more so than playing them. Um, Cause some of them are very brutal. Um, basically what you do is you show them the mechanic. So first we show them that you know, in 2D, the block is here, but then you can switch to th 3D, or that. Yeah. In 1D, the block is like this, but then you can switch to 2D, and you would maybe just have something literally say, press that there, and you're like, okay, I get it, we jump over it. Then you do that again. This time you can't jump over it, you have to go under, and this might make you run out of your energy or something like that uh, because you smashed into it, and if you try to recover without regening, then you'll probably die. Um, so now we could maybe play on that idea that you have to be quick about something, right? So one way we could do that is by having like some sort of rhythm. Um, like I'm imagining 
Maybe this is a little bit more complicated than I was hoping for like a first item. I mean, obviously there are easy items like something that will improve your regen rate or something that will allow you to just be in 2D without the meter falling down. But if we have some kind of rhythm, it would mean you have to complete it like ba ba ba. Like you can't just go there and then stop or something like that. Um, so that's one thing I'm thinking about is if there was, it's kind of like, I don't know, I'm imagining those like swinging knives or if there were uh, spikes or something. Yeah, maybe we could do spikes that go in and out of the ground. Um, Cause let's say you stand here when there's no spikes, you switch back to 1D. I think the goal is that, so here's another question I have and you guys can help me answer this. I was thinking that in 1D, maybe you shouldn't even be able to see blocks. You just see like a dot because it's 1D. Um, like if we click the game or we play it right now, I'm thinking if it's 1D, wouldn't it add maybe an extra element of challenge if we didn't see the block sprite, maybe we just see a dot knowing something's there. That was just something I was thinking about. Um, because then when you go to 2D, you'd want to assess the situation before going right up to it. Uh, let's say you have spikes going in and out of the ground. Maybe they'll still hurt you if you step on them in 1D, but you have no clue what they are. So you want to run through them in 2D and then get to a safe place before switching back to 1D because then it creates that kind of like blindness. So that's one thing I was thinking of doing. So actually maybe let's do that now is um, I'm going to replace I'm going to replace the sprites with just like dots, I guess. Um, so that's my first mechanic. If you guys have any other ideas, let me know or we can all Wait, it keeps, okay, one thing about this is that it keeps asking me, or like when I search things in Windows 10, uh, it'll like keep recommending the store app before it recommends the thing that I actually have installed on my computer. So I've just started manually finding things. Mm, all right, this will be fast. We're not gonna draw for that long. Um, 32 by 32, and this will literally just be a dot, so it'll take us about two seconds. Yeah, are you talking about the, uh, the app finding thing? I agree. Uh, so let's see, let's have this be, let's just make it black so that it'll stick out. So it's just gonna be a black, like, circle, I guess. Um, yeah, that's fine. Hard to go wrong with a black circle. Let's see, does that look all right? It's okay if it's not symmetric, but I actually, let's keep it symmetric. So this is three, this is seven over here. This is six over here. So it's a little bit asymmetric, but this is how we fix it. We just go like this and we go boop, and then we go like this, and then we go, okay. Uh, except we want to move it back over. I moved it the wrong way. So I think we want to go like that. And then how many are there? There's six on this side. And then there's six on that side. And then there's like a bunch going up and a bunch going down. But I think we want to move this at least one up. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know there's probably a better way to do this, such as just adding up the numbers. Okay, I think this is a little bit not symmetric on this side as well. And I need it to be symmetric, even though we might not even use this as a final asset. So we're gonna go like this. We're gonna go boop, and then this, and bear with me. It's necessary to make this dot as perfect as possible. Ah! I should just switch my brush size instead of dealing with this. Eh. Okay, there we go. So this should be good now, uh, except we have to move it one down again. Okay, this dot should not be this big of a deal. Okay. We're just gonna call this dot, and it will be a PNG. And let's make sure it has the alpha channel set. Okay, it has everything set, the transparent color. So this should be fine as is. Um, now we're gonna import it in here, and we're gonna change everything to dots when they're in 2D, so that we have no idea what they are. Now, once again, you guys, I know this all looks very ugly, 
if you have the design mock-up, like, it won't really matter what things look like because you can always just literally swap things out and it'll look beautiful. That's one thing. I'm guessing a lot of you have seen um, Indie Game, the movie. If you look at, I forget, did I see it in that documentary or did I just look it up? Uh, basically, Jonathan Blow, um, his initial mock-up that like won awards for Braid was, if I'm remembering correctly, it wasn't like as pretty at all. Like I don't, he didn't do the art. I don't think. I don't want to like say things I don't know because it's not like I came here and did all my research and prepared or whatever. Um, but it was just very basic, like. From what I remember very long ago, it looked more of like a like a block kind of running around or just colored objects that where you could understand the puzzle, but it wasn't like, you know, um, it wasn't like it had the full art before it was um, before it was out there in the world. Uh, so, OK, so these are all going to turn into dots. And this is just like the floor. We make the floor go away when it's 1D, so now we're also going to, let's see, we're also going to change this to a dot. So we're gonna say, let's see. Give me a sec, I'm, uh, I don't think we need this bool by the way, but I'm not going to revise my stuff just yet. Uh, we're gonna say, Obj.get component sprite renderer. Wait, so we're gonna say if so if the if it's in 1D, because right now all we have is the change. If we say if it is 1D, then we want it to be a dot. If it's not 1D, we want it to be swapped out for the other sprite. Okay. So if is 1D, and this is going to look uglier and uglier as we go on, and this is why, once again, oh god, I'm spending all my time making excuses, I'm just going to shut up and we're all going to deal with it together. And then I got to talk about my strawberry thing! The strawberries and the soylent, I have a very poignant point to make that's now going to get too hyped up. Oh my god, okay. So we're going to get the sprite render, and then we want to make the sprite, I think we can just set it like this to equal, I'm actually not sure how to set sprites with the script, because I know there's probably set sprite with script unity. Because I don't know, do we just say the asset name? Like asset slash something? Because sometimes unity has weird little quirks where I'm not 150,000% sure what is going on with it. Um, changing sprite during runtime. Uh, Resources.load, that's right resources.load. Oh, but I think we want to put it in a, yeah, we need, we need a resources folder. So let me make sure, is it asset slash resources or I don't know why they don't automatically make a folder called resources if that's what happens. Um, don't put sprites in resources. Okay, now everyone's saying all sorts of different things. So yeah, I do know about this whole res so basically if you make a folder called resources, uh, there's a thing that will like automatically kind of load from it, I guess. Um, Unity resources folder. Sorry, hold on one sec. We're just I'm just want to make sure I'm doing this right so I'm not just running around like like Okay, so we can put it in our assets folder. Okay, so we're gonna create a folder called resources and we're gonna put the block in there. I think it automatically changes the path. Oh, and I didn't use my four left right things yet, but we're gonna put all these into resources and that's all we should need for now. Actually, you know what? Let's just put cat, let's just put all these animations into resources. Okay, so now we can access, it's having a problem. Right, because I'm not done with my code over here. Okay, resources.load, and then I think it should just be called dot. So hopefully, I think we can just use dot. I don't know though. Like, I don't know if we have to say dot PNG or, let's see, it's having a problem with it. 
I think we do a string, right? I don't know if this is correct or if it's going to find anything. Um, I'm going to say else. Uh, so that means all dimension objects need a default sprite associated with them. So sprite, um, I'm going to call it a sprite 2D. And so sp this is something that will need to be constructed manually. Um, or we get its name. Okay, let me just do that. Sprite 2D equals resources dot load. And then it'll be, um, game object dot name. So yeah, so we'll just make sure the because like this is block, then we'll make sure all of these are block. But oh, okay, I don't know how I like this. I don't know how I like this. This is getting gross. Let's see if, the, if these are all named block. Like if could we do block stripped with numbers? Like could we see it if there's a substring? Ooh, ooh, let's do that. Um, like if there's a substring, that's the one that we want. So we'd load. We want to load the asset whose name is a substring of the object's name. So let me look up C sharp substring. All right. Let's take a look. String.substring method. How to get substring in C sharp. Okay. Um, Input.substring. Okay, so it's just string.substring. Okay. So we want to get, let's see. I'm just trying to think. Hmm, maybe this is a little bit different than I'm thinking. Because what I would ideally have is if it's like block one or something like that. I don't want to make a new sprite for each of these. Because they mean extract. And I'm still, oh, I just want to talk about things. I have so many things in my head I want to talk about. But um, there's no, I don't want to do a gross function. I want a cool unity function. Because there, there, I mean, of course I could do it just by like, using a for loop or something lame like that. Um, but yeah, we could use regular expression right up C sharp documentation, strip numbers from string, because I think that maybe will be good. Remove numbers from string, not extract them. Sometimes people, when they say strip numbers, they mean extract and I'm still, oh, I just want to, talk about things. I have so many things in my head I want to talk about, but um, there's no, I don't want to do a gross function. I want a cool unity function because there, there, I mean, of course I could do it just by like using a for loop or something lame like that. Um, but yeah, we could use regular expressions. Um, I don't want the first occurrence of a number. I want everything that's not the number. Okay, let me look this up. Because regular expressions, I never learned regular expressions in C-sharp. Regular expressions, C-sharp, remove numbers. Um, maybe it's, I can definitely think of how to do, I guess, regex replace. Removing numbers at the end of a string. Regular expressions are good to know. I didn't expect this stream to be like that, but um, okay, it looks, this looks good. This looks good. All right, so our sprite name, we're just gonna make string sprite name equals, oh gosh, it never copy paste from here. Regex.replace um, game object dot name. And then the syntax is weird. Maybe, okay, if you guys want, let me know. I can explain how regular expressions work. If that sounds lame, then you don't have to say anything. If you'd like me to explain how it works though, I'm happy to explain. And I think we need to import it using, is it like system dot, okay. I, I'm not gonna try to guess what the import name is. Regex import C sharp. I really wanna use Python right now. 
Is there a big difference between C++ and C Sharp? Yes, definitely a huge difference. Um, for example, C++, unless I used a library, which I don't like using Boost and stuff like that, there would be none of this stuff, really. It would be like you'd have to do pretty much everything by hand, directly affecting memory. Um, and C Sharp is kind of like the .NET answer to Java, I guess. Like everything's cleaned up for you. Um, it handles memory. Uh, yeah, C Sharp is way more convenient. Um, I still like it way better than JavaScript, which is the other language you can use with Unity. Hate JavaScript. I don't like it at all. Um, well, hate's a very strong word. I don't hate it, but Python is still my fave though. Like maybe it's just cause I'm fluent in it, I guess. I know all the little tricks and stuff. I don't have to deal with this, um, but this should be Sprite name. Let's see if this works. So what this is doing is it's stripping all the numbers from the game object name, and then it's gonna load the Sprite that matches that base string. So let's see if this works. It says that we have a problem, which is fine. Cannot convert type unity object to uni unity sprite. An explicit conversion exists. So I'm guessing, I don't know if we should be casting this or not. Um, so like if I say dot, like if I do this, can I do dot sprite? Or should I just say like this? It says we can cast it, so hopefully that's okay. Um, cannot implicitly, an explicit conversion, okay, wait, wait, wait. I'm sure this is a Unity thing that I'm one sec. Implicitly convert object to sprite. What do I dislike about JavaScript? Oh, um, I mean, there's a, there's a couple things, there's a couple things that are more of like me me personally that I just don't like working with it. Like for example, I don't know if you guys have used uh, D3, which I really like it. Um, but I remember I was making a data thing and a data visualization. Well, okay, D3, maybe I should explain what it is. It's a JavaScript library that does really pretty data visualizations. Actually, let's just look at it right now really quick. Um, it's this really cool, and you can even like fork it on GitHub. It's all there. Um, this is what I was really enjoying doing a lot of. Um, but sometimes, I, you know, JavaScript, the functions like don't wait on each other. So things all go kind of like out of order. So wait, this isn't, I wanna show you an interactive one. I could show you the one that I did, um, but I'd rather do an interactive one. But like the data wasn't loading when I wanted things to load. So like, yeah, see, look, you can do like cool interactive visualizations like this and stuff. Like this is showing, I think it's like, I think it's explaining probably a kind of like math or code concept, but you can do these really beautiful animations with code and things are all going out of order. Like for example, if I'd click on this, it would be like, it would, I don't know, things would finish before they should have and stuff like that. And I really didn't like working with that and having to make all this system to make sure like before the for loop goes, make sure that the data is there to iterate on instead of just executing the for loop before loading the data and then saying, oh, there's no data and then just stopping and freezing and stuff like that. I don't know. It was kind of weird to develop for. And then also if you guys know like Richard, what's his name? Richard Stallman, I think. Um, he has some crazy ideas about JavaScript. He says that if you run an NVIDIA card, you you have malware. If you're using a non-GNU operating system, you are running malware. If you use Facebook, malware. He's a cool dude. He There's a lot of interesting things about him. He basically is probably the most legit person in terms of like data rights and stuff like that. Like the only person I think possibly in the world at this point who actually gives a shit and like, he's he's like, his opinions are extreme, but he's the only person who's actually, yeah, who's actually, I think, taking stuff seriously uh, because he is kind of right. I mean, I'm not gonna like uninstall, I'm not gonna live like him. Wait, 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 we have to look up his website really quick. Hey there, 
Today, actually, today I am taking requests from you guys. In case people just dropped in, uh, if you guys want to request any kind of mechanic to be added to this game, um, I can re-explain it if someone wants me to, um, but I will take any requests. But okay, just to show you guys what this guy is about. This is Richard Stallman. He's a professor of, I think, I want to say it's computer science, but sometimes they're professors of physics and math that are doing computer stuff. So this is his website. It doesn't run JavaScript because that's malware. And if we look at, let's just look at, um, let's see, he has, so basically his entire website, last time I checked, yeah. So instead of being like blogs or anything like that, cause he makes everything from scratch. Um, it's just bullet points of his ideas about things like us citizens do this, do that. Um, and it just goes on. He's actually, yeah, yeah, see, so he just has like all sorts of things. Like instead of Facebook, he just has bullet points of his travels, photos of him, just to show you what he looks like. I hope he still looks, he has his like glorious beard. Oh my gosh. So this is him. <laughs> he came to my university saying that he was like, what was it? Like the Archduke of something and like he kept like he had like a six pack of Pepsi's on the podium and he just kept like like in the middle of his speech it was like a two or three hour speech I don't know how he kept going and going but he would just like you know open up a new can of Pepsi um <laughs> just like all the time and it was just so funny and he auctioned off these little gnus and you know to give you an idea of who he is like um not who he is, but like his humor, I guess. Like GNU stands for GNU is not Unix. And so it's a recursive acronym, if that makes sense, because the G is part of the acronym. Ah, there's no base case. Ah, so funny. Um, but he, I think, I'm just taking a moment to talk now. Uh, he apparently was living out of his van in like his office at MIT. He was like essentially homeless because he was trying to, because he wasn't taking, I think it was like he wasn't taking a salary for his research because he didn't want that to like influence something. I don't know. He's basically, I feel like he's fully funded off of like donations and things maybe. See, this is where I'm not like well educated. I didn't plan to talk about this, but he, um, yeah, because he cares a lot, I guess, about like the fact that even I'm using Unity and when I use it while I'm connected to the internet, um, I'm probably sending some data or like metadata back to Unity. And he believes in not open source, I don't think, but like free software uh, because open source can still be used. Or what was it? I don't know. He believes in like the free software movement which is basically that like, if you're gonna use something like Microsoft Word, let's say, he would want that code to be available to everyone, which obviously Microsoft is not just gonna post the code to Microsoft Word, um, but you would be able to look at the code and then you could teach students how to understand all the applications that they're using and improve them. And that would be the ideal situation for all software, but right now, like people trying to copyright and hide their software is bad. There's just like a ton about it. And I probably can't say everything on this stream right now. But and, um, you were a member of the free software <coughs> movement. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't have an opinion in the sense that like, I'm not saying, ooh, he's weird or ooh, he's Jesus. I'm just saying like, he's pretty cool. He brings up issues that like, I think actually matter and I feel like Congress or like politics across the entire world there's not a single country that is like caught up to um, technology really um, you know when you see all this shaky stuff on the internet about like downloading and um, ads and just all these like gray areas that like everyone does or doesn't do and no one says anything about it Okay, right now, I just want to make sure, I don't know what, do I have to sprite create? Basically right now, I'm trying to focus again. I'm trying to figure out how to cast this, basically. 
Um, I feel like I'm missing something really simple. I don't think I want to just like, okay, Unity, Resources, Load, Sprite, Casting. Oh my gosh. It was weird trying to be a part of it. Yeah, it is weird. It's almost like, you know, those people who try to live with as few trash, like as little waste as possible. There's another lady who was trying to only uh, buy things that were not made in China to like not support that, I guess, or, you know, people who just don't create garbage. It is very, it's very hard. And I think the one thing is, is that whenever people try to do something like alternative, I guess, that's with good, I don't know, that has like good intentions at heart. One thing that annoys me is when people like bash them or whatever. Um, you know what I mean? Like, as long as they're not obnoxiously saying, you have to do this too. It's like, why would people be mad that someone's trying to like reduce waste? Or why would people be mad that someone's trying to like care about data privacy? Or, like, uh, information rights or something like that. Like, don't hate if they're just doing their thing. But it can be annoying if someone's in your face like, Do you even understand my data? <laughs> you're, you're just one of the sheeple. Okay, why does it keep saying I can't cast to this? This is like, oh my gosh, I'm casting the shit out of it. Oh, okay, it's saying resources- Oh. Ha! Found it. I didn't realize we had to do that, and nothing indicated I had to do that, but I think this is it. And if it's not it, we'll keep Googling, because that's all you do. That's all you can do. Oh man, I would not like to stream some of my worst bugs that I've ever- Stop! Why is it saying I can't cast to it? This is how you're supposed to load sprites, damn you. Oh my gosh! Ugh, this is so annoying! Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Resources.load load sprite. The following loads a sprite just fine. <sighs> this doesn't load a sprite just fine. Not at all. Um, <laughs> the angle... Oh, okay. These are basically... Let me go to an example. These are getting a, a type, basically. Um, so, like, we're getting a component, but this is, like, defining the type of the thing that we're supposed to be getting. Um... I guess if you did it in another way, you could implement it so that you just put it in the parentheses. Um, but I think it's like templatized, if you guys might know what that is, um, where it's saying, okay, get component, this function applies to any generic type, but you have to enter in the type for it to go and grab it in the correct way, basically. Um, so that's why I was thinking, I was looking it up and I was like, okay, this makes sense because this is how it's been doing a lot of things. Let me just cast the shit out of it. <laughs> Sprite2D equals sprite resources.load sprite sprite name as sprite. Okay, do you get the type now? Do you do you under it still doesn't understand? Am I missing a cast? An explicit conversion exists. Am I missing a cast? I don't know. I did every cast I could. I know I'm missing something very uh Okay. I'm actually kind of raging right now. Um get component dot override uh, maybe? Oh, wait, 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 Let me check something quickly. I doubt this is what's happening. Resources, dot. So it does say it is of type sprite. Okay. It says it's definitely a sprite. Let's go back. I'm gonna type, I'm gonna Google it in caps this time to see if sprite explicit cast exists. Because this is how you do it, but I need to figure this out. Okay, here we go. Someone with my exact problem. Oh my gosh. What game engine did I use in college? I never made any games in college. I went to a pure, like, engineering, like, theory, algorithms. Like, most people, I feel like I am the... I think I'm literally the only one in my grade. Maybe there's one other person who's, like, a year above me who's doing anything, like, game-related seriously. I guess. Not that I'm calling myself so serious, but who's like, who, where like, I know that that's also like their dream or the thing they want to go after, even if they're working in a different job at the moment. Um, 
yeah, so I basically learned, that's why I use, like, really, really old stuff, I guess, um, like, old OpenGL and things like that, because I was learning more of, like, graphics theory, and that's, I think, reflected in my videos, like, my most recent one about Dimension, like, I'm not someone who will go and show you on Unity how it works, I guess, um, I guess I'm more comfortable, like, going through the math, and then I feel like the code kind of naturally goes from there, so... I know in the GitHub student pack, that's when Unreal Engine wasn't totally free all the way back like two years ago, but then they put it in the GitHub pack, and so I messed around with that, but then it seemed very scary to me, so then I stopped. Um, but right now I'm getting really annoyed at this. Let me just say game object. What happens now? Let me just try some things to see how Unity is going to do things. Not implicitly convert a sprite to a game object. So it knows it's a sprite! Wait, if I just do this, because I'm spending way too much time on this, but I also just need to fix this so that everyone can know. Cannot type object to game object. What if I just call this an object? There, generic object. Are you okay with this? Is this okay with you? It's still... <laughs> what the fuck? Cannot convert object to type sprite. Nothing in... So it knows it's a sprite. That's what's so annoying. It knows it's a sprite. But it's saying that it's not a sprite. Oh my gosh. Okay, come here. Come here. See, this is like... This is actually like Dark Souls. You know? This is actually like Dark Souls. Because you just can't do it. This is actually probably just about as interesting as watching someone die in Dark Souls a million times. Okay. It's saying that now there's... Okay, now I'm thinking... So if I do this now, what's it going to say? This is just so annoying and boring and lame. Okay, now... Are you still saying... Now it's saying cannot convert type object to type sprite. I don't want to open fraps. <sighs> okay. Let's just make this an object then. And we're going to load the object. Let's just see. I just want to see how it's going to do this. No fraps, go away. I just want it to load something. This has never been an issue with me before. Ah! I There's no other way to really load sprites though besides like resourcing load. Um, I'm pretty sure that's really the only way you can load, like, assets, like, on the fly. Um, okay, resources.load. So for literally everyone else I'm looking at, it just, like, works. Which is annoying. Let's say I just do game object, and I just do resources.load. Should this be okay? If this isn't, then I'm just gonna give up on this whole dumb thing. Cannot implicitly convert from Unity. Can you just convert it? You obviously, if the compiler knows there's something within you, there's something within your heart that knows that there's something, that there's something there. Oh my god. Okay. We're going to try this one more time. And if not, I don't know what I'm missing at all. Game object. This is real rage right now. This makes no sense. And cannot convert type object to type sprite. What? How? T Is this not enough for you? Oh my god, what do you mean? Now you think it's a sprite before you didn't think it was a sprite. Decide. Decide. I'm casting this shit out of it with the most generic ass thing that it could possibly be. I guess it's not a game object? I don't even know. Oh my gosh. The location of the error changed? Oh, I see what you mean. Oh, wait! Am I- have I been doing the same thing the whole time? Wait, oh, but wait, oh, fuck. If that's true, then... Give me a sec. Oh god, maybe I just made a huge fool of myself. I think I made a huge fool of myself. I'm just gonna impl I'm just gonna ignore that, and I'm gonna thank you silently. Exactly, exactly, do what I want.
Oops, I made a huge fool of myself. Um, no one's going to see that. This this broadcast will be promptly deleted. Or this part will have a curious uh, blackout. Um, oops. Oopsies. Someone wasn't paying attention. And that someone was me. Oh my god. I knew it wouldn't be that. Oh, okay. We're just going to ignore that that ever happened. Freet009, you have ruined me. <laughs> okay. So yeah, now it's fine. Now we're back here again. I was- yeah. Awkward. Awkward. Let's clear these warnings. Okay. Okay. That was super awkward. Um, right. So now what's gonna happen? <laughs> Holy shit. Now what's gonna happen is we're gonna go back to the game manager and we're gonna do our other thing. Raging at code is what programming's all about, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's why I say, I say this maybe like every stream at least once. I'm like an old grandfather that's just like, you kids, let me say my life advice over and over. In this case, it's that Dark Souls prepares you for this shit. Except I think i decided, at first I was like, I want to really get good at Dark Souls, and not in a meme-ish sense. I just wanted to actually get good at it. And I'm like, how about I take all that effort that I can spend on Dark Souls, and I channel it into making art and code and things like that. Not that it's a waste of time or anything. I'm just saying. Um, I'm just going to cast the shit out of it like I did before. This might be overkill, but I don't even want to deal with it. This this is compiler. Do you see this? Do you do you think it's a type sprite, huh? Do you need more do you need more casting? Do you need it? God, I got really mad. This is not the worst thing I've ever faced in my life. This is not Oh god, I fucked up. Oh no, I deleted like half my code. What did I do? Okay, undo, undo. <laughs> This is like by far the most tame issue I've ever had probably in my entire coding career, but <laughs> I think there's a bit more pressure when there's anyone watching you. I freak out this much when I just have, when I'm like, hey, coworker friend who sits next to me, you know more about this thing. Could you help me with this? And then as they're watching me and I'm like, <laughs> and then it works instantly and I feel terrible about wasting their time. Um, right. So, let me get it sprite 2D. We're gonna get it this dot. Uh, wait. We're gonna get the obj dot. Well, we're gonna get, oh, we're gonna get this component. Dot. Sp it should be just called sprite 2D, right? Yeah, it should be there. Oh, we gotta make it public, that's why. Dot Sprite 2D. Okay, so this should work in theory, but it might totally, totally not. <laughs> ah. You get that feeling 10 minutes into playing anything? Do you mean, I, sorry, sometimes there's chat delay and I don't look up. Do you guys mean like how like, you just feel like, I don't know. You know what? I'm not going to put words in your mouth in case it's... I embarrass myself again. Alright, let's just check that this sprite loading works the way I'm hoping it will. Yeah. <laughs> CWXVL, that's my jam now. Okay, so this should be a dot. And... Oh, there we go. Hey, look at that, you guys. But then we do this. So the whole point of this is that we don't know what obstacles ahead in 1D, then we switch to 2D and we're like, oh, there it is. Because this is how it would work on a 1D thing. We just have kind of like a dot or like a discoloration that would maybe tell us that. So we go up. Okay, so I like it. And sorry that the cat is all crazy and like blue and things. Um, I kind of want to change that now, but we're kind of also on a roll. So hey, that works. We just need to replace all of these with dot sprites now to start with. Um, because it will know, based on its name, which one to load. But hey, you guys, regular expressions worked. And so did me, um, embarrassing myself. 
Okay, these are all dots now. I know it looks ugly, but this is just what we're rolling with for now. I'd also like them to be kind of aligned on the same axis. Um, so yeah, I think what we do is we put the dots in the different locations we want them to in 2D, and then they'll be projected into 1D like as we go. Um, okay, so let's just play with these dots for a second. I think um, the one thing, well, let's, okay, let's play this again really quickly. Um, so I think the one thing I wanted, so we go boop, boop, and then we go to 2D, and then it's a whole world, then we go back, and then where is this? It's over here. So now, could we maybe do some steps? So if we see a bunch of them in a row, and we go up some steps. So we're gonna just do that, because I don't want to spend, well, okay. If you guys want to give me any more mechanic requests, go ahead. So far, people have been quiet, and then the one person who was going to message me, I think that something messed up and I didn't get a message. Very sad. Um, but let's see. So what we're going to do, we put the dots in the locations we want them to be. So we're going to put this at, they're in one half increments right now. Let's say I do a 0.25. I think they need to be one half increments because of how big the blocks are. Um, and then this is going to be like maybe 0.25 up. And then we're just going to make some steps and then maybe we'll make like a power up or something. Yeah, this is kind of like Paper Mario, I guess, um, except I would call it like not Paper Cat, but what would you call this? This would be like true Paper Mario if he was, what's that? Is there really a 1D equivalent? 1D is a very weird thing to work with because it's, um, you know, it's kind of like 4D in that it's not like we really have like an analogous thing to compare it to since nothing's really in 1D. Like even these dots should technically just be like one pixel. Or technically, there shouldn't even be one pixel because technically a pixel has a width and a height, so it shouldn't be anything at all. But anyways, so these should create steps, so let's play our game. I should probably just drop my cat over there so that doesn't take as long because it takes kind of a long time to load. So we're just going to do this, and then our magic meter is going to go down. We do this, we pass through here, we do that. Okay, so now we come across this, and we don't know what kind of barrier is this. So we do this, and then, uh, oh, oh, I know why, I know why. Our regular expression, we need to, so, okay, so we can't just do duplicate, or at least we have to rename these things, because our regular expressions are not grabbing things with parentheses. So we're going to move these up here as well. This is not the best way to do it. Our goal, if we have enough time, which I think we will because there's a whole like month for this challenge, uh, we're going to make these loaded by text files uh, so that it loads much more dynamically. So we go like this. Okay, so we see a dot over here and then yay, now we have steps, but oh no, the magic meter is about to fall and now we're we're trapped in here. Wait, let me clear this really quick. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to test out these stairs. So let's move our cat really quickly just over here. So this is the point where we're encountering our stairs, right? We're encountering our stairs. And so we're, so I think this was the one right before. So we encounter the stairs. Our magic meter is going down fast. So let's say we do this. So it traps us in between. And then we can just, I guess, fall through. It's like fine. There are different ways around it, I guess. Um, yeah, it's okay. So, but wait, oh, I got an idea. So you have to do this, right? Oh, okay, I just got an idea. Up here, uh, but we can jump out of it, I guess. But I think it's, it's a very glitchy jump. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a glitchy jump right there. Let me just see, okay, and we can't go under it. Maybe we want it to be able to go under at least. I don't want to like trap people. Maybe these should be a tiny, tiny bit farther apart. Cause let's see, where is this right now? Block two is at position three. So maybe if I can make this at like more of like 3.75. Hey there, Tandy McGee. I, I am loving that name. That's the most fun thing. I know I was just talking about you. So, okay, so let's say we do this. Oops, we can't get out. So let's say I'm like, ooh, I'll just pass under it. Um, well, we, okay, we didn't do, I know I just gamed over. Okay, so we just have to make sure the blocks actually appear. Uh, but we can jump out of it, I guess. But I think it's, it's a very glitchy jump. Uh, yeah, that's kind of a glitchy jump right there. Let me just see. Okay, and we can't go under it. Maybe we want it to be able to go under at least. 
I don't want to like trap people. Maybe these should be a tiny, tiny bit farther apart. Cause let's see, where is this right now? Block two is at position three. So maybe if I can make this at like more of like 3.75. This is where these things come in. Uh, like, you know, Mario Maker, for example, they kind of have Mario's run and jump down pat, right? Like that's not, that's not changing. Um, let me see. So this is the kind of stuff when you're making a brand new game that gets very difficult because, let's see, we wanted this at 4.5, because you have to kind of figure out what you want your values and your coordinate system to be, and that can get a little bit hairy. Um, actually, what I might wanna do is make this closer to there, but then a little bit higher so you can pass under it, um, if that makes sense. And then these are both gonna move up, and I hate that I have to keep, yeah, I'll put it under there. I'll call these all block four. It's not probably the best way to do it, but it's fine. Um, yeah, having these individual objects is not the best way, but it's fine. So we do this, we go up here, and then we can't quite jump that high. I don't know. So we could either, because the thing is we want the cat to be able to pass under it. Wait, wait, why are these not? Okay, that went too high. <laughs> Wait, why did these blocks go up so high? Um, maybe these, these should all have unique numbers or something. Um, cause that wasn't how I wanted it to go. And I'm gonna change the cat's jump height just for now. It might be a little too bouncy for my tastes, but we'll just change it. So let's go over there. Let's go to his script. Let's not do it through his, through his little dialogue box. What do we have as the jump height? Let's make it like five. I think this is gonna, no, five was way too much. I remember doing five. Let's do 3.5. I don't know, I don't remember exactly how the jump thing goes. One or moving platforms, I like that. All right, we're gonna do moving platforms then. Um, but right now we're having casting errors. Pew, pew, pew. I can't do the, uh, oh, it needs to be F. I can't do the air horn sound, but. That's a goal of mine. If I ever get into beatboxing, everyone, the first thing I'll learn is how to make an air horn sound. All right, moving forward. Let's hope that this is rendered. I'm just checking if it's, okay, we can get up here. So let's say we do this. Oh no, we're trapped, we're trapped. Okay, I should make this a little bit bigger so we can see. Uh, so we go like this and then, um, okay, now we're trapped again. Right, so we're trapped in between those two things. The weird thing is that it's not, maybe these can't be under a hierarchy. You know what I mean? I just wanted to test that, but I think maybe that's, let me move the cat over here and just check that this wall is working in 2D. Cause it was really weird that it rendered before and then now it was going crazy. So yeah, you see all of these are collapsed into one thing. So we go like this, oh no, we have a wall. So we go over here, we go like this, we go like this and then Oh no, but we're gonna run out of energy. Okay, so it is like kind of a challenging puzzle, I guess. But here's my other question. Okay, so let's say we go over here, we jump up here, we jump up here, and now we go like this. When I move back, I think it'll save my position to be back up here. <gasps> and then we did it. <gasps> we did it. Okay, so that was actually a decent thing. So it does save our position in 2D, even though it seems like we're in 1D. Now that's a decision that we have to make. Do we want it to save that position or do we want it to be if we switch back to 1D, we're stuck back at X equals zero. So that's something that I'm gonna think about because all dimension objects, the reason why it does that is because everything inherits from this dimension object class and we have like a restore Y value that we save. Uh, so it keeps that value for the blocks and for the cat. Anyway, I'm really happy with this. Let's do some moving platforms. How about, how about that? We'll do a moving platform over here and we'll have a really high wall maybe. So let's do that. We will copy all of these, not those. Paste, and then we'll have a really high wall. This is our flat, <coughs> oh, apple in my throat. This is a really high wall. Now, okay, I'm trying to think of a better way around renaming literally all of these blocks. If I just called them block, if I called all of them block, I'm guessing it will still render. Let's test that. 
because that would just be fine with me is not renaming all of them. Like I said, this might, for some of you who are used to Unity, I'm probably making a fool of myself constantly, but it's fine. Okay, so we can just do that. So we wanna go back. Okay, so now we have this. Now let's make a moving platform. So the moving platform for now will just be of type, well, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's make it of the floor sprite, just to, you know. Um, let's see, so we'll create an empty object. We'll put it down here. And I'm gonna make just an empty object here. And let me just see if inheriting from things, if I just make something called block, I just want to see how this works to see if I can organize my hierarchy where there's no point to this object other than to just have all the blocks under it. So I don't know if this will work or not. You feel like the cat should get stuck? I was kind of thinking that too. So let me just make sure these, okay, so these render. Okay, sweet. Maybe I should even just have it if an object's parent is called block then you do that because it's kind of a pain to actually yeah i think that's maybe the way it's supposed to be done and i'm just being very silly um so we have invisible left flag okay this shouldn't be called the flag collider this should be called um invisible wall right okay so now we're just kind of organizing our object manager so i'm just going to make something called invisible wall so yeah maybe we can use these parent labels to our advantage to organize things better so we have our invisible walls, we have our flag. We're just gonna take this out. Um, and then this game object right here is going to be our new moving platform. So where did that game object go? Why is it all the way over there? Um, put it, you know what, I'm gonna delete this, delete it, and then let's make a new one that's not in the UI coordinates. Let's make one that's like right, right there. There we go. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna make this our moving platform. Um, we can call this, oh, hey, thanks. I can't pronounce your username. Once again, I'm fascinated by everyone's usernames, but Kylock, Kylock. That reminds me of like, I don't want this to sound cheesy, but like, you know, the, the water tribe from Avatar. Cause there was like Tarlock and Unalock and <laughs> I love that show so much. Korra wasn't as good, but it wasn't bad by any means. Um, it was because I think Korra was supposed to be like a mini series kind of. And um, yeah, <laughs> I, to me, that was mainly it for me. Um, I think that they didn't write it the way they would have if they had unlimited budget for the first season, because uh, I don't think they even knew if it was going to be coming back. But that was just, that was just my theory. Um, why won't the PS4 Twitch app show you a bio? What do you mean the bio? Oh, you mean like mine or something? I can tell you my life story, but that might not be even what you're talking about. Sorry, I'm trying to import the floor asset again, but rename it as moving platform. Um, just so that it looks different. Oh good, everyone can see my files. Okay, yeah, effed up snuggle bear, just like I was saying, uh, my Dark Souls 1 playthrough, my very first one, not like online or anything, just my actual playthrough, was called, um, um, my character's name was Snuggle Bear, so that's why I was kept hiding all my documents, because there were all these funny little things that were like, Snuggle Bear effed up, Snuggle Bear badass, Snuggle Bear the best. Um, okay, so we're gonna call this, we're gonna just call it Moving Platform in the Explorer. All right, so that should have changed here. Right, so this should now load that sprite in 2D. Otherwise, in 1D, um, it'll just be a dot. Uh, so let us add some sprite renders to it. And if, once again, this stream, it's open. If anyone wants to add a mechanic, just go right ahead and request something because I'm trying to make things as fast as I can. You can't catch me because I'm the gingerbread man. Um, right, so that seems like a decent height for it. Oh, any rules? No, I don't have rules. <laughs> Not that this is like, oh, edgelord, anything goes. 
I don't play by the rules here. It's just like I've never seen a need to. I find it very hilarious when I look at Twitch rules on other streams and there's just like 40 of them. Like, no politics, no religion, no this, no that. If you do this, I'll do this. If you do this, I'll do this. Here's the list of banned people. Don't get on my naughty list and just all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, something happens. I mean, I it's not like I'm so big. Maybe if you're a lot bigger, it actually does cause a problem. But like, like, dude... Because the thing is, you know for a fact, you see the viewers that are there right now. You know if you say something, I'm going to see it, and I'm going to respond to it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to deal with that shit. Um, okay. Um, let's see. Let's make this platform move. Oh, I'm starting to make myself lightheaded. So what are some things we need? We need this to be a rigid body. It's going to be on the floor layer, not the UI layer. Oh, this isn't the UI layer. We're going to make this the flow layer. And then it should be a dimension object. So everything with a dimension object is going to have a dimension script attached to it. I'm pretty sure. Let me just check. Um, ba -ba -ba, da -da 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 -da. Okay, yeah, dimension object, and then it starts out, it'll load the sprite dynamically, and then it'll have a sprite called dot attached to it. This has dot, this has no sprite, and what did this have? This had a box collider, so it's not going to be a rigid body. Oh, dude, thanks, Dandy McGee. I don't really think of myself as that. <laughs> not so much. Well, let's see. One thing I'm worried about is that this is going to be kind of box-like when I want it to be, um, that's, oh, that's going to cause a problem. So I'm making everything as a generic dot that automatically loads things, but what I want is for this to match, I want it to match the sprite that's going to be loaded. So that's one thing I'm worried about that the box collider bounds might not, I might have to adjust box collider shit in the 2D thing. Will the block move in 2D space or will it move in 1D space? Oh, that's a really cool idea. That's a really cool idea. Um, moving it. Oh, I get what you're saying. So that's the other thing I was going to ask about how to handle moving objects. Let's say this guy, right now he's representing our flag because he's cute and honestly it was just because that's all I imported into Unity. Um, but if he, let's say he moves back and forth like this in our 2D space, should it be that in 1D, if he's on x equals zero, he's moving back and forth? Because uh, the other thing was like, let's say he's on top of a block like this. Pretend this block is like more, uh, it has more space. Let's say he's at y equals 1, moving back and forth and back and forth. Would we see him on top of an object? Or like, or like if he's moving up and down, would we see him appear and disappear? I guess we would, right? It's just a really interesting idea. Okay, that'll be the next thing that we that we play with, I guess. That'll be the next thing that we diggity deal with. Um, right, now what we want is... I think I want there to be two of these things smashed together. So let's do that. We're going to make moving platform. We're going to make a duplicate. And this will also be moving platform. Um, this is what I'm trying to handle if I want two sprites chained together. Once again, I'm really new to Unity in case anyone's just tuning in. I am not like very good at Unity. Um, I know my theory. I don't know how to use tools. I don't know the best way. I know how to make good code, not necessarily good Unity games. Um, so right now I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do my thing. Uh, moving plat. Oh, ah, bleh, bleh. Okay, go if over here. Could be so oh, thanks for the follow, dude. <laughs> the Dark Souls references probably don't make as much sense for this stream, but hey, you've used GMA. Is that Game Maker? I'm guessing. Have I tried Unreal? I've tried it. I'm not good at it. If I'm having this much trouble with Unity, I know Unreal is, I think, when I looked at it, it, it appeared a little bit harder. Um, but, okay. Let's get down to business. Let me just see what this is going to look like. So if we do this, we're going to put this at point two five. Okay, so this is where? What is this object? This is at zero. This is at point two five. 
and we're gonna have these move in tandem. Um, see, I don't like how I'm doing this. I should just have one object that has two. Okay, you know what I'm gonna do? You know what I'm gonna do? We're gonna go back to graphic scale really quick. I'm just gonna make a platform sprite because the way I'm doing it is just dumb. And so we're gonna make it 64, it's width by height, right? Fuck, now I'm forgetting. If I do, yeah, this is what I wanted. Uh, so we're just gonna make a new sprite really quickly. We're not gonna be lazy about this. Um, we're not gonna be lazy, but we are just gonna use a fill bucket and call it a day. There, that's our platform. That's me not being lazy. Plat, moo, mo ah, ah, okay. Sorry, that, that sound of like, wait, 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 let's see. It makes me feel like I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> makes me feel like I'm a small child that's <laughs> not doing it right. Okay, so now we go back and let's import this new asset. Let's not be hacky about it. Being hacky never gets you to a good place. Oh my god. Oh yeah, wait, wait, wait. This is a really funny picture. I keep hiding all my pictures, but I want to show you. Wait, I just want to make sure there's no... Never mind, that's going to show my address in there. Basically, there's a picture of... um. My apartment company is really weird. They're not really a company, but my apartment landlord management company really likes just like hijacking the internet to tell you, like they don't email you things. They'll literally you open up your browser and it'll be like, attention, you people are loud. Like, or like be respectful to your neighbors. Like not to me specifically, but to everyone. And then it'll say, you may need to close your entire browser and reopen it to restore things as normal. Like you literally have to close every single tab and reopen it. Anyways, so when they did that hijacking thing, it just latches on, I think, to the first internet instance or something. And so in my Blizzard launcher, you know, the nice GUI launcher they had, all the where it would usually say news and updates and things and Blizzard stuff. It was like all of my apartment information and even that like ticker, you know, at the bottom of the screen down here. It was doing this ticker across and it was like like so and so properties, blah 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 blah. And it was moving past. It was so funny. I don't know how they did that. It was so weird. <sighs> okay. Um, and someone I don't know is texting me saying that they were asleep okay I don't there's not a number on that okay sorry that probably made no sense and I'm not going to take the time to explain what I meant by that um right let's see how this renders really fast <sighs> we do this let's take a look uh that's too high can we see it? Oh yeah, glitch up the bricks. Glitch up the bricks, kitty. Okay, I can't see it because it's too high. <laughs> We're gonna put the cat up here. The joy of having ultimate dev power. Okay, it looks like a crazy totem pole. Oh, it looks like those spiky dudes from Mario. Ah. Okay, now we're gonna do this. Oh no, okay. We're gonna set the cat up here, and we're gonna start the game in 2D. Um, wait, no, that's not gonna work. I just wanna see it. Okay, ready, go. Okay, what the fuck ever. I'm just gonna... Oh wait, you know what I'm doing that's so stupid? I don't need to put the cat up here and look at... I'm so dumb, you guys. So dumb, go watch a different stream. Uh, change dimension, then go over here. And then check the moving platform, and it is not getting the right sprite. So that's good, because now we know that that's, that's what's happening. Um, because if it did have the right sprite, it would display that. Um, okay. It's a dimension object. Let me just make sure it's block. Okay, let me just make sure it has everything. Block, it starts out with nothing, it loads the right thing. And then moving platform. So this is all pretty much the exact same thing. It's just in a different position. And it's just not grabbing the sprite. So maybe let's just see why. Uh, is this in the resources folder? Yes, so this is block. Oh, you know what, maybe it is? Aha, this is why. It's not a sprite, that's why. And we're gonna just take all these filters out and everything's uncompressed because we're about that life right now. Uh, okay, great. Now let's see what happens, and this cat's gonna fall. 
Okay, we're just gonna look at the scene. We're gonna do this. Aha, there we go, it rendered. So this is a little bit gigantic. So let's go back to our sprite thing and maybe I shouldn't have just used the fill bucket like a crazy person. Let's make this white or like transparent so that the platform is a little bit flatter like what we're probably used to. Um, this will be very uneven, but we can change it later. Um, why did I spend so much time making the dot symmetrical if I'm not going to make this symmetrical? Anyway, um, so we're going to re-import this thing. Um, it should be... Oh, right. I have to put it from here. I'm going to move this over. I'm sure, once again, Happy Cat Exposed is going to be a thing. Everyone's going to see all my crazy files. Um, where did my... What is this project called? Oh, my project is called Terrible Art. That's a great thing to name your project. That's not confusing. Okay. Yes, replace that shit. All right. Moving platform. Should now be changed. No, this needs to be transparent. No. No. I swear I set the transparent color. Apply. Sprite editor. Damn it. Oh, it's... Okay. Maybe now it'll do it correctly. We need the white to be transparent, but it's not... It's not doing that. And so we gotta go change some more things all over again. So let's go change some things. Uh, let's go check our transparent stuff. Uh, transparent color is, in fact, white. And... Aha! The culprit. You made me have to do this all over again. Okay, moving platform. Yes, replace it. Oh, that noise constantly making me feel like, there we go, see it's transparent now. All right, we're ready to go. If I decide if the 1D will be a squashed down version of the 2D space or will be just one slice of the Y axis. Um, oh, do you mean, you're bringing up a very interesting point. Uh, do you mean that the cat Either it's only on x equals zero, like down here, or let's say the cat jumps up here. Actually, I think that's a great idea. Um, let's say the cat is up here. Where is this? This is like y equals one. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant y equals zero. The cat's at y equals one, then it can only see, when we translate it into 1D, it can only see everything that's at y equals one. Is that what you mean? Because in that case, I think that would be very interesting as well. And that would be definitely something that um, I'd have to maybe, like, edit a bit, I guess. Um, edit the system. But that will definitely be. How about next week or, like, in a couple streams? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make more mechanics. So right now, let's say this is World 1-1. One, one. If this is World 1-1, one, one, then what we're doing here is introducing the player to the fact that you switch between 1D and 2D. But then let's say level one, two, or the second level. Maybe now we can go into different slices of the y-axis. I think that's a great idea. You have YouTube video ideas? I guess if you mean for me, like requests for ideas, then I'm always game for requests. Because I want to make things that people actually want to see. So yeah, I'm basically, today is like request day for like everything. But you know, I'm pretty open to whatever. So what am I doing right now? Right, I wanna see if this renders properly. I've just been kind of like going about. I don't know how you describe it. So we should see like kind of a skinnier platform appear. Um, right, we gotta switch to 2D. Then, yeah, so this, so now we want this platform to move from left to right. So where is it right now? Right now it's at zero. And we want it to move, I'm guessing, just right here to 1. So that's actually a very easy thing, just to move between 0 and 1. But we don't want to hard code it. So that's our challenge right now. We don't want to just say move between 0 and 1. We don't want to hard code it. Ah, da, da, da. Um, yeah, yeah, I totally get what you mean. It is like, I am making like the 1D to 2D version of Miyagakure, except Miyagakure is really cool and has pretty art, and it's like, Japanese inspired and stuff. I'd really, I really want to play it because it looks like there's maybe even a small kind of story to it. I don't know. It just looks so cool to me. I had to make something on it. Using make, if you mean like make with Linux, or do you mean like Sigwin make? Because I don't even know. I've done so many things to try and use make files on Windows, and none of them are like great besides just installing Linux on your computer. Mmm. Mmm. 
and how in-game cutscenes work. I'm guessing if you mean like events, like like if for example I come here and then this cat, like there's an, an event that's triggered and then the cat runs over here. Um, I feel like that's actually, it comes down less to how that specifically works and more how you would make like an event system so that you can program different things that happen when you reach certain points or trigger certain things. Um, Visual Studio does do make files, but it can be a little bit weird. Um, yeah, usually if I have to import a project with a make file, I'll use Visual Studio. But in terms of doing it from the console, I'd just rather have like a Unix computer. Um, what am I doing again? Fuck, I just keep... Right, we want the... God, fuck it. Okay, we want a new script. That's why I'm getting confused. We want a script. And it's going to be called Moving Platform. I don't know. I guess making its own script makes enough sense. Makes as much sense as anything. So let's open this up. Uh, oh, me and Gawkerage, like, on hold or something? No, but definitely, oh, just to finish the thing of how in-game cutscenes work, I can definitely do something on, like, event systems, I guess. If that's what you mean. Um, I wasn't shooting it down. It's just it might take a different spin than just the cutscenes by themselves. Yeah, the apple. Sorry, I, I'll have to listen to this later to know how... How noisy that was. <laughs> um, right, moving platform. It's just gonna be... Is there like a move to thing in Unity? I think there is. Oh gosh. Um, move to Unity. How long have I been eating it? I've been eating a very tiny apple for approximately an hour and a half. <laughs> I've been somehow like nibbling away at like the core. I don't know, when I have like food there and I have like a spare moment, that's just kind of what happens. Um, we have vector three, move two. Okay, move towards. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna say, so we have float step equals space speed times time dot delta time. This is Unity's code, do not steal. Um, public float speed and this speed will start out, I forget what the, what is kitty speed? What is our little kitty speed? Kitty speed is one. Let's make the platform a little bit slower than that. Let's make it 0.5, but we can adjust that. And then we're gonna say transform dot position equals Da, 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 move towards and then current target so it's going to be I guess current would just be transformed up position target will be let's also do something like that public um, vector 3 I don't think we need this to be public actually public vector 3 target and this target is going to equal its initial position um, well, I guess we have to do a new vector three transformed up position. So it's going to be one unit away. See how nice I made all the coordinates and such. And I think this is just going to be zero, but I will just grab it just to be sure. Um, right. So we have all of this in order in a game with a lot of cutscenes, Hasn't it? Ox oh, yeah. Hasn't oxidized and turned brown? It's a little bit brown, but like brown oxidized apples aren't, like they don't taste different, really. I mean, it's gross maybe after like a few hours. Right, oh my God, the Soylent and the strawberries thing. I think I mentioned it the first 10 minutes. I talked about a bunch of other crap. Ugh. I guess you guys will have to just wait for my Soylent video. It was basically about how I have a whole thing about like bruised fruit and like it's a whole, I have weird phobias. Oh God, there's so much there. I'll. I'll tell you guys later, unless people care. Um, how code is organized to activate a cutscene? Yeah, 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 yeah. I totally get what you're saying. Um, yeah, that's something I definitely like to talk about. Because it is, um, you know, there is like a tendency to want to just hard code it or something. Um, yeah, so I get what you're saying. I get you. Um, this should be okay now. 
Uh, but we're gonna say we're gonna have a bool called bool moving left, and this is how we're gonna know to change direction. So we're gonna do moving left equals true. When I eat the apple, it sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> uh, let's see if I have enough apple left to even do that. Maybe that one wasn't as good. I'll get a new apple as soon as I run out. I have a whole bag of them. Uh, if moving left, we will do this. Actually, I'm going to store the start and the end. So we're going to have another vector 3 called source. And source will equal new vector 3 of transform. Well, okay, it doesn't just let us do a copy constructor, which is weird. Uh, okay. Because I would just like to have it copy the transform dot position. I don't know why we have to do X Y Z. I'm probably still doing something wrong, but whatever. Uh, we're gonna move from our position to over there, and then if moving right, or if not moving left, then we're gonna move to the right. So then we're gonna move towards the other way. Uh, vector three dot move towards, and it's gonna go from its transform dot position to the source and then step. Okay, now we need to make sure once it gets there, um, so we're gonna say if transform.position uh, equals the target, and we'll see if there's floating point nonsense that's gonna make that not equal to it or with some kind of weird range. <laughs> Thanks for getting a new one. I'm glad it really adds to my stream. I guess, it would be like one of those cheesy radio shows where they have all those like crazy sound effects, like bong. <laughs> um, if, okay, we'll see if there's floating point weirdness that happens, but otherwise, we're just gonna have this moving left. Mm. Okay, so we're gonna wanna change the source and the target, if you get what I'm saying. Hold on moving left equals not moving left. And then we want to basically swap the target and the source. You know what I'm saying? Mm hmm. So what, what I'm envisioning is that we have this. And is there a good way for, is there a nice C unity swap values? Um, because there's a really nice way like instead of, I don't like using the temp, but in Python you can literally go A, okay, it's not letting me do it. In Python you can do this, and that just swaps A with B. Um, yeah, how to swap two variables without using a temp? Because I just would like to do that. Um, how to swap two variables without using a temp, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I know it's annoying to use a temp. Wait a second, what? Oh, he's using some crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. He's using, look at this. He's using like bitwise operators. That's not really what I was talking about. I just want a nice C sharp function instead of adding a temp, but it's not a huge deal, really. I, it's probably using a temp behind whatever library function it's using. I just want it to look nice right now. Um, okay, fine. Fine, we're just gonna use the temp. So we're gonna have vector three temp equals source. And then we're gonna say source equals target. And we're gonna say target equals temp. There, bam, boom. Got it. Um, okay, so this should work in theory, I guess. Because if it's equal to the target or the source, um. I don't know, would that work? I think it's because I don't want there to be like an edge case for like for like starting it or something. Yeah, I am looking for syntactic sugar. That is the best way, that is the best way to describe it. That's giving me flashbacks to my compilers class because that's what's like my teacher's favorite phrase. She'd be like, she just like, uh, never mind. That's when we were learning OCaml and stuff, and that's probably my most confusing video on my channel, which I severely regret. I don't regret making the video. It's just more confusing than it's worth. 
Um, let's see if the platform moves or if it goes crazy. Oh my god! Is it okay? I think it just flew away. I think the... What? Where did... Where... What? Where did it go? Oh, it is moving! Hey, look at that! Look at that! Wait, it's coming back, I think. Wait, let me go. Why isn't it moving? Oh, it's not moving back is the problem. Okay, that's fine though. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. It moved, at least. Um, let's see, it's moving from transform position at target to target. Let me just see what happens here, I guess. Because if transform position equals target, it's going to stop. Let me just do this and this, and then we're going to do this, and we're just going to see what happens. Teacher's favorite phrase was nur. <laughs> I don't know what that means. So yeah, we haven't handled motion with this either, which is making it extraordinarily weird. Oh, because it's moving to... Okay, here's the other thing we need to check. We need to make sure it's in 2D before it starts moving. Okay. Let's go, go, go. Let's do this. Let's make this platform move. So it's not moving left. Let's just take a look at what the target and stuff is, though. So it's saying the target right now is 5.8. And its current position, its current position, it's 1, 0, 0, which it is. And we want it to move back to 0, 0. Um, let me just check what it, so the source right now, huh, I wonder if this is like updating or something, well I guess when it's normal, hmm, let me just see, let me see, because this should be okay. Then it goes to there. Technically, okay, I think my general logic is to, oh, check for nerve balance. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. That's like um, a bunch of my friends like using the Pomodoro method where you like time yourself on certain tasks and stuff and eventually been saying it so much that I've just devolved it into calling it the permadur. It's the permadur method. <laughs> uh, <laughs> like, guys, I can't talk right now. I'm on my permadur. I need to... I, I'm, it's not my five minute break time yet. <laughs> it's basically like a workout for people who are trying to learn discipline, which I wholeheartedly respect. What am I doing right now? Trying to figure out, right, we're trying to figure out what is happening. Okay, let's just see what the initial source gets triggered to. So do this, do this, we're gonna restart all this, I'm getting distracted again. Let's keep going though. Oh my gosh, stop, it's freezing up on me. Okay, there we go. We're gonna do this and we're gonna do a 2D check next time, but let's just make sure this is all working out. Okay, it's going, it's going, it's loading, and stop. Okay, so it's saying the source is 5.80, but that's not what it is. I think, because it should not be 5.80. Hmm. Let me see. It should be 0, 0, 0. Where's, because like 5, it's saying it's like over there when it's not. So there's probably an explanation. Oh, is it trying to get this object? That's weird. I don't even need this object. Oh God, I didn't mean to do that. I think it's trying to get its parent object back when I was messing around with things. So we're gonna move this over here. We're gonna do a 2D check for this one so it doesn't just float away. Uh, but let's just make sure it's grabbing the right source before we do anything. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the tomato timer, that's exactly it. All right. So here is our source. It's still getting the absolute wrong value. Wait a second. Maybe I was getting the wrong value. 
Maybe it was me all along. Target should be 6.75. Okay. Yeah, now we're getting the right values. Great. Um, now let's undo this because we need to make sure it's only moving. It's not floating away when it's in 2D. So we're only going to do all this if it's in 2D. Um, and there should just be some global variable. I keep having to do weird, weird shit. Um, but for now, game object dot find game dot get component game, or I think this is called the game manager. Uh, get com see, there should just be some global variable, but I'm too lazy to do this right now. Um, just gonna do this. We do this, and then we're gonna be extraordinarily messy. There should just be a global object thingy that I can look up, but for now, we're just gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and we're gonna hope that maybe some things work. Can I make a video <laughs> on how to eat sunflower seeds? I don't know. I don't know if, I don't know what, how that would, uh, wait, hold on. We need to check this guy out. He's not, it's not moving back. Um, let me take a look at the script. Let's attach the script. And we're just going to take a look over here. Oh my gosh. Um, so moving left right now, it equals false. Um, and the target right now, this should... Oh, you know what? Maybe the step has to be negative. Would that make sense? I think that makes sense. Uh, step times equals negative one. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I don't know what Unity does. I don't know how it do. So let's see how Unity do. Dooby dooby doo. Okay. Come on. And restart. All right. Oh, good morning. <laughs> oh my god. Everyone's on totally different time zones. That's like the best. Ah, oh, it stopped again. Why do you stop? Why do you do this? Why? What is with this thing? Oh my god. Um, step is right now zero. Wait. Now it shouldn't be zero. Okay, it should be negative though. Is it just move? Okay, so yeah, see it's here. If transform.position equals target, so moving left should be false right now. Um, I think maybe there needs to be like a tolerance or something like that. I don't know if that's what's going on here, but um, on my apple eating technique, oh my god, what's LOC? LOC? I don't know. Did I mention something about that? I'm getting confused. What is the largest? What is the largest game I've made? I guess lines of code isn't always the best metric for like the largest or the best thing you made. You always kind of want to go for the smallest lines of code um, organizationally. I mean, really, it was just when I worked at a studio for the summer and I was working on their engine. That was the most lines of code because there are probably like I mean, you're working in a huge, huge, huge code base that's, you know, has stuff that's been there for like 10 years at least, and maybe the people that worked on it were gone. So that was probably the largest thing, working on actual enterprise level code with like, you know, maybe 50,000 lines that you're kind of at least aware of. Um, that's the thing. These little projects, they help you, but nothing prepares you for that huge amount of stuff. Oh, lines of code. I was looking at that like, is that a, is that, is that like a game or something like that? Like Legend of Chalupa. <laughs> Cause whenever I see that LO something, okay, okay. I'm with it. I'm with it. I'm with it. <laughs> ah, okay. Um, so right now what we're trying to figure out is why this thing just stops. Um, because I'm wondering if it's doing this over and over again. 
So yeah, it's not just like saying transform equals left. Let's see, let's go down. I'm trying to just figure out what's going on with it. Is step not times equaling itself? Is that what's happening? Let me try this again. Huh, so that's never, it's never getting called again and it's never moving backwards. One thing I'm wondering though, if this is getting called, um, okay, now the step is really little. No, no, now it's fine. Okay, so our target is five, that thing. And our transform up position is that. And it is getting called because it is in 2D and everything. Um, maybe it really is that the step needs to be negative, but it's not making it negative. Okay. Let's just, actually, you know what I'm going to do? Instead of doing this silly stuff, I'm just going to say this and we're going to call it each time, which might be a waste, but we're just going to see if this is what the problem is. We don't want this to be negative. We're just going to see if this is what the problem is and we'll have a whole giant fun refactoring party at a later time. So let's see if this works. Hopefully it does because it is calling it and the logic seems right and it's not getting stuck and stuff like that. Um, I'll look at what you guys are saying in just a sec. So let's see, it's going over there and then it's getting stuck. Okay, what are, what are people asking? Um, does the exclamation park ap apply to the second t condition? Uh, no, it shouldn't. It'll just invert this and then this, we're just checking if this is false. So technically we do want, you know what, let's make this look better. This is also nodding this. Um, but yeah, they're two separate statements when they're joined by the and. So yeah, we're making sure if it's moving left and we're not in 1D. If it's not moving left, mean it's moving right. And we're not in 1D, do these things. Um, what I'm just not sure of is why, let me just try this one more time. I know it's annoying but we all have to move through it together. Uh, so this is still running, right? Okay. So what I'm wondering is, why is move towards not moving backwards? Uh, because this seems like it would be, um, yeah, like let me, if we look at its position, it's still stuck at, what is it? Still stuck at that. So now we turn to Google, move, towards not moving. <laughs> That's very descriptive, but move towards not working as planned. That's a very nice way to word your question, sir. Um, I'm looking at Googling things. Um, probably, okay, his thing is way more complicated. Um, it's very silly, but I'm doing blah, blah, blah. Okay, that doesn't help. Okay, I don't really know what's going on right now. Um, okay. Let me just hard code it real quick. Um, Cause I don't know, maybe is it not flipping? Okay, right now target, let me just try this again. Target is this, position is this. It's calling this, so it has to be doing something. Moves point in a straight line. And this step, is it that step is really weird? Is that what's happening? But I think that's just cause of the Delta time stuff. Um, let me undo this because yeah, this should be moving on back, but it's not. And that's what's really annoying right now. Um, okay. Let's just try this one more time because I need to like find the problem before I can just start messing with things. Transform dot position. <gasps> Holy shit. Holy shit. I'm so embarrassed. Okay, no one saw that. This this VOD is not going up. This is not going on the bro- Fuck, shit. Bye. Don't say- No, I'm gonna say- <sighs> No, that was so dumb. It was even right there. Shut up. Shut up, you. I hate you. No, don't- It's running away. It's running away. Oh, I'm so dumb. Goodbye, world. This is me right now. Goodbye. Goodbye.
I'm flying away. <laughs> I'm never going to be found again. Let's see how far I'll go. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> Okay, I'm just gonna fly off the screen right now. <laughs> ah. I made so many dumb mistakes today. Okay, bye me! That's me right there. Okay, bye! <laughs> I can blank your minds! Yeah, that's kind of what I want right now. So, no fraps! No! <laughs> Why isn't- where'd it go? Where'd my editor go? Oh, it's down here. Great. <laughs> okay. Okay, we have achieved resonance, everybody. Well, maybe on the plus side, we don't need this negative sign. Maybe. I feel lightheaded. Someone send help. Send the troops. <sighs> Everything's fine. Everything's just great. Hey, everybody. <sighs> okay. <sighs> Let's see if this works. I'm getting a shit ton of warnings, too. Oh, God! It's still doing that dumb move to thing. Okay, we do this. Is this moving back? Okay, but it's not moving back again. But at least it moved, kind of. So let's try this one more time. Send fried chicken. Ah, uh, yep. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Sorry, I messed up the test. It shouldn't be doing this move to thing, but that's fine. So we do this, it moves back, but then it doesn't move back again. Okay, we're gonna fix this. Okay. So this shouldn't be happening. Oh, shit, I forgot to do this. Okay, this is fine. Um, the only thing now is why it won't be moving back. So we're gonna just check that out. Um, because it should be inverting this, and then the, these things move, these things move. It should be okay, but I'm like still not sure. No! <laughs> oh my gosh, now there's all this speculation about what those pictures that I keep hiding are. It's just, I don't want people looking through my documents, that's all. Okay, it's moving back. Oh, you guys, it's happening! Look at this! Look at how awesome that is! Oh my gosh, we've achieved moving platform, everybody! Oh my gosh, I'm so excited about this. Okay, this is really exciting. We have our first level pretty much completed, and next time, I'm the stream isn't over yet, but next time we're going to do what, um, what we were talking about, which was having the slices of 2D space in the 1D. But yeah, oh my gosh, that's so funny. What if this game does take off? What if this does truly take off? And we're going to have, wait, Wait for it. We're gonna have a little Easter egg over here, everybody. Just wait for it. We're gonna have what are my resources right now? We are going to put Psycho Kitty. I'm gonna put Psycho Idol over here. Psycho Kitty's going over here. And we're gonna call wait, wait, wait. No. We're just gonna make an empty game object. And we're gonna make a little Easter egg. Because, you know, why continue with the stream as planned if if we can just get sidetracked. So we're gonna do sprite renderer, and then we're gonna put, actually we don't want a sprite render, we want an animation, and we're gonna put psycho idle over here, and I don't care, and do do do. Okay, so he's just gonna go over here, and he's not gonna do anything else. Um, he'll be a dimension object, he'll be, okay. Let me just see if this works as planned. Okay, animation clip could not be found. That's fine. But anyways, we have an invisible wall over there. So we're gonna just play through this quickly. Oh god, something terrible has happened. No reference exception. Which... Oh god, 
if this is what I think it is, there's seriously a bug with Unity where I'm I'm almost positive it's because I have this animation here. If I delete this, will this make it work? Seriously. Okay, we do this. We Okay, see? Look, Unity is so weird with animation. Uh, but let's make this game a lot bigger. Whoop, 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 whoop. Put this over here. Put this over here. Okay, there we go. So our magic meter is at a hundo wondo, and we go over here. I should cast it to in int. There's no really real good reason why it needs to be afloat right now. We do this, we do this. Oh no! But then it should save our value, but we don't want it to do that necessarily. Uh, but I guess that would make some things a little bit harder. Oh god. So if I do this, what happens? Okay. This is very weird right now. But it works. Oh no, game over! We lost our magic. It's fine. Because now we've won. Eh. Eh. Okay, so the collider to tell us that we've won is not working. Which is always nice. Um, this should have... This is our flag. This should have the flag position recorded. I don't know why it wasn't telling me that I won or anything like that. <laughs> yeah. As a shrine MC Kitty. Is, is this... Is this MC Kitty? Or McKitty? Mick Kitty? <laughs> I still haven't told my strawberry story. <laughs> Thanks for remembering. I'll, I'll leave you guys in suspense, because it's going to be part of my next video, I think. But um, some more inspiration for the game. Ladders or rope? Spots where you can walk upwards in 2D space rather than jump? Oh. That would be really... Wait, wait, wait. Trampolines that send you back in 1D space? I, I would need you to expand on that a bit more. Towers, you can topple the bridge again. <gasps> you guys have such good ideas! Ooh, keep these keep these uh in mind. Keep these in mind. Um For sure, for sure. That all sounds really cool. Wow, maybe this could be like an actual game. It's a cat player. <laughs> cats could go up ladders. Cats can do many things if they have the will to, which I think that's the hardest part, is getting the cat's will. <laughs> getting a cat to do anything, but okay, so it's been a couple hours now. I think we made a lot of progress. Um, something's up with Flag Kitty, with Psycho Kitty, but uh, we're gonna, we're gonna <laughs> make it climb curtains! I love that! I love that so much! Oh my gosh! Okay, and then this movie platform should be like a ceiling fan, <laughs> if you guys know what I'm talking about. Or not a ceiling fan, what, what what's something that cats move on? A Roomba? My, I always see cats on those, like, automatic vacuum cleaner things. Um, so yeah, we've made a lot of progress today. We have a lot of cool level design things. I'm thinking, I guess, wait, what day is it today? I've had a couple days off, so I'm, like, losing track of time. I guess, yeah, tomorrow at 3 p.m., we will make cats in sliced space, and we'll implement at least one of those mechanics along with the new 2D thing. So that's what we'll do tomorrow. Um, I'm thinking right now, though, because I kind of want to take a break, um, I might end up streaming a puzzle game next that would actually give me... I'm almost wanting to do it as inspiration for level design, because I rarely play games, like, with the sense of trying to write down, like, how the puzzle works, not just how to solve it. So I was thinking right after this, like, after maybe a 15-20 minute break or a 10 minute break, I was going to either play... Anti-chamber or the witness, and this is for fun. Don't expect like some crazy insight that I have that no one else does. But I was thinking, since I'm thinking about level design today, and I want to take a break right now, that that's what I'll do. So thank you guys so much for joining me and Cat and Psycho Kitty, all of us together, um, because there's some really cool mechanics happening, and we'll work on them tomorrow. <laughs> Uh, tomorrow, 3 p.m. Central Time. And it seems like this time is working much better for everyone's uh, time zones. So we're going to keep it at 3 p.m. as long as I can. But obviously that's during, like, working slash uh, doing things hours on days that I do not have days off at. So we'll just see how everything goes. Um, it is 5.11 p.m. right now. I'll be back here at 5.30 Central Time 
to just have some fun and chill out, but right now I need some food that because my apple core is getting very, very tiny. Uh, but definitely bring your ideas tomorrow. We'll do more of this. And I'll see you guys very soon.